In this video, I'll demonstrate how to set up and initialize the ASA Abloy Enterprise Lock to prepare it for communicating to the Ruckus IoT controller and how to perform the scan operation of the ASA Abloy Lock into the Ruckus IoT controller. Major steps of setup include configuring the Vision Line server, configuring the Lock Service 3G, going to the Ruckus IoT controller, and doing the following. Add the ASA Abloy plugin with the Vision Line IP address and its username and password. Go to the IoT AP and set the Zigbee ASA Abloy protocol. Scan for the ASA Abloy lock while passing the Discover card over the RFID reader and then check Vision Line for the door status. So the first thing we have to do is launch Vision Line. So I'll go ahead and launch Vision Line. And for system setup, you want to select start the system in the unlicensed mode. Normally you would have a license for this, but this is a demonstration. So we're doing an unlicensed mode. Click next. You want to have box check do not use the operator cards. Then I'll click finish. Now it's going to ask me for my user ID and password. And that is what is provided by default in the unlicensed mode. So the username is SIM and the password is SIM. So this brings up my vision line program, and I'm going to position this on the left because I'm going to have to use the lock service 3G on the right. So I'll move the windows out here a little bit so we can see what was going on. So the first thing I want to do is to select tools and then options. And then I want to open up the online box here, and I'm going to select miscellaneous. And I want to make sure that the Enable Online box is checked. In my case, it is, so I'll click OK. Next, I'll select List, and I'll click on Doors. And I'll expand this out a little bit. Now we're going to add a door. You'll notice that we have Door 101. We're going to add this, and it's going to be a guest. It could be PMS guest common staff or whatever so it depends upon what your lock is but we're going to choose guest and we're going to put a number in here of 102 the area we'll select for floor one and we'll give a description art room the type of lock will be door unit and we'll take the default of the open time of four seconds and then we'll click save and then we'll click close and you'll notice here that we now have a list of the doors so we now have two doors 101 and 102 so we'll go ahead and close this next I want to click on devices and I'm going to add a device so I'll call this the art room and we'll give it a description of art room under the type, we're going to select Service Device Host. And you'll notice here that it has a port number of 27015. Now, this is an important number because we're going to use this in our Lock Service 3G. So you want to write this number down. So we'll go ahead and click Save. And then we'll close it. And then we'll close out this window. Next, we need to launch our Lock Service 3G. So I'll go to my Windows, Lock Service 3G. And we'll launch that. I'm going to position both of these windows on the screen at the same time because we're going to be going back and forth between these windows. So I'll squeeze this over a little bit. And under Setup, I'm going to click on Server Connections. And under Setup, I select Server Connections, and I'm going to add my server. So I'm going to give it a name. I'll call it Vision Line because this is the Vision Line service. And I'm going to give it the address. And I'm going to put in the IP address of the Vision Line server. Now to get that, I'd have to go to my prompt down here and type in my command and I could do an IP config and you'll notice here that my address is 192.168.8.123 so that's the address that I would use over here so I'm going to put in my address and next I'm going to put in my port and if you remember that was under my devices over here and that was under my art room and that was the port 27015 so that's the one that I want to put in here and then I'm going to click OK. So that'll give me the, my server connection, vision line, and gives me the IP address, and it gives me the port. Next, I want to go back to my vision line server. Next, I'm going to click on service devices. And you'll notice that I don't have any service devices here because it hasn't discovered one. So I'm going to click on add. 
And you'll notice here it says enter the following registration code in the server PC terminal application to register the service device. So the number here is 555805. So we'll want to remember that code. So if I go back to my lock service 3G, I'll scoot this thing out of the way here. If I go back to my lock service 3G, I want to register the PC. So I'm going to put in that code, and that's the one that I have here, of 555. 805 and I'm going to hit register and you'll see that it says registration complete okay so I'll click OK on that one and what this does it establishes the link between vision line and the lock server 3G next I'm going to click on system ID and I'm going to get so I'll click on get and it'll say that the new system ID has now been set so I'll click OK for that next I'll click on download data from server and I want to make sure that all these boxes are checked. So I'll check all these and then I'll click on download. And that'll take a little while. And then you'll get download data from server is finished. And then I want to do this one more time. So I'm going to check all again and hit download. And you'll notice this time it asked me for my user ID and the password. Now this is the vision line user ID and password. So I'll put those in. Return. And it says download data from server is finished. So I'll click OK on that. The next thing I want to do is to connect the console cable from my server to my lock. And once that's done, I'm going to click on set system ID and lock. So I'll put in a port and I'm going to click set. And it says the system ID is already set in this lock because I've gone through this exercise before. But if this hadn't been done, you would go ahead and set. So that system ID has been set in the lock. Next, I want to click on Initialize Lock. And I want to select the floor. So I'm going to select Floor 101. And then I'm going to click on Initialize. So the initialization has been finished. So we'll click OK on that. Next, I'll click on Set Time and Lock. And we'll go ahead and set the time. I'll get an OK for that. Set Time is finished. Click OK. The next step is to configure the lock, so I'll click on that. You want to make sure that your serial port is set. And under Configure Lock, you want to make sure that you have Start Discovery in Zigbee. Then I'll click Set. And I'll get a configuration finished. And the next step then is to upload the firmware. And I want to make sure that I select the standard lock, so I'll go ahead and do the upload on that. This is going to take about a half a minute or so to do this. And it says the upload firmware is finished. And that's, like I said, that takes about 30 to 45 seconds to do that. Next, I would click on parameters. And I'm going to want to click on a readout. And it says the time is not set in the lock. Do you want to set it? So we'll go ahead and set that. So this gives me a readout of the lock. It says room 101, no entrance interval. It gives me the lock firmware version. It tells me that it is a Zigbee lock, so this is going to be important when we do our when we do our Ruckus IoT controller. If I scroll down, it says that I have my 4.5 battery and my 4.5 lock case. So if I click on the module, this gives me the firmware version, and we want to make sure that it's 3.0.60.0, and it says that it is a Zigbee end node. So that completes the setup between Vision Line and Lock Service 3G. What I would do now is disconnect the cable from the lock, and now I would go to my Ruckus IoT controller. So from the Ruckus IoT controller, I would go to my admin function, and I'm going to go to plugins, and you'll notice that I don't have any active plugins, so I'm going to select my ASA Abloy, and I'm going to activate that. And you'll notice here that it asks me for a username and password. Okay, I'm going to click on show for the password, so that is the password that I'm using. Here it asks me for the vision line IP address. So this is the IP address of our vision line server. So we had 192.168.8.123. I'll take the default port and then I'll click on apply. And that will apply the information. It says the operation completed successfully. So now under plugins, I have my ASA Abloy plugin. So now I go back to my IoT APs, and I have two IoT APs, and one of the ones I have in here I've labeled as the IoT Zigbee AP, so I'm going to click on that one. 
and I want to make sure that the protocol for the IoT AP that I have here is Zigbee AA. This is the access point that I'm going to scan for my Zigbee ASA Abloy endpoint devices. So that's all set. So my next step is to scan for the device. So I'm going to click on Scan for IoT Devices. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to pass the Discover card over the lock itself. And I'm going to have to do this several times. And you'll get a green LED on the lock itself. And as you can see, the device has showed up. Now, in this case, it shows a name because it recognizes the MAC address of this and it's seen it before. So it automatically put the name in. If this was a brand new scan, then I would have to go ahead and add the name and then I would go ahead and hit accept. And the operation was successful. Then I would stop scanning. And then under the IoT AP approved, I would go ahead and apply to approve that. So that operation was successful. Now if I go to my IoT devices, you'll see that my lock has now been added. And if I click on that, It'll give me the IoT device name, and it'll give me the IoT AP that it's associated with. And you'll notice under the operation that it says no operations can be done on this device. The reason for this is that the Ruckus IoT controller is replacing the ASA Abloy gateway, and all control of the lock will be done through VisionLine. The advantage of using the Ruckus IoT controller is that it eliminates multiple ASA Abloy gateways, for example, on each floor of a hotel, and can monitor and control other types of IoT endpoints as well, such as IoT sensors, LED lights, thermostats, and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and close this window. And now if I go back and I look at my dashboard, you'll see that I have three devices up here. If I go under my IoT devices, you'll see that I have the different IoT devices here as well. So as you can see, the process of setting up and discovering the ASA Abloy lock is somewhat detailed, but instructions are included in the Vision Line installation guide. So this completes our demonstration on how to configure and scan for a Zigbee ASA Abloy door lock using Vision Line in Lock Service 3G and discovering the lock in the Ruggus IoT controller.